grace to you in peace. My name is Pastor Doug Rebley, and I serve as assistant to the bishop in the Eastern Synod. I come to you this day from our Eastern Synod office here in Kitchener, Ontario. Good to be with you. It is my privilege to offer the second sermon in the ELCIC Summon Sermon Series for this year. Today is Holy Trinity Sunday. So with that in mind, I share with you these words from Psalm 8, which is one of the assigned psalms for Trinity Sunday. The psalmist writes, O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens out of the mouths of babes and infants. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are human beings that you are mindful of them? Mortals that you care for them. It's a good question, let me say that again. What are human beings that you are mindful of them? Mortals that you care for them. Here's another question. Are you familiar with the name Chris Hatfield? I suspect many of you are. He is the Canadian astronaut who, when he was in space, twittered and sang himself into the hearts of our country, young and old alike. Are you familiar with the name Russell Schweiker? I suspect most of you are not. He is an American astronaut who flew on the Apollo 9, after he returned to Earth from his space adventure, he wrote these words, quote, When you are in space, you see the Earth not as something big, but as something small out there. And the contrast between that bright blue and white Christmas tree ornament and the black sky, that infinite universe, really comes through. And the size of it, the significance of it, it is so small <clears throat> and fragile and such a precious little spot in the universe that you can block it with your thumb. And you realize that on that small spot, that little blue and white thing is everything that means anything to you. All of history and music and poetry and art and death and birth and love, all the tears, the joy, all of it on that little spot out there that you can cover with your thumb. It is all a matter of perspective. Is it not? Truth be told, our lives are lived on the basis of our perspectives. The graduates that we honor at this time of year have a perspective that can no doubt be described as on top of the world, and why not? They are celebrating a significant accomplishment, whether it's graduating from high school, a university, or a community college, whether they took online courses because of COVID or not. But soon that perspective will change and life will be seen through the nervous eye of someone starting their post-secondary education or from the bottom rung of the job ladder. We all see different things at different times. It's all in the perspective. The story is told of a, of a wealthy man, he made his money in oil, who commissioned Pablo Picasso to paint a portrait of his wife. When the portrait was completed, the man was shocked to see the image that had been created. Well, that looks nothing like my wife. You should have painted her the way she really is. Picasso took a deep breath and said, I'm not sure what that would be. Without hesitation, the man pulled out his wallet and removed a photograph of his wife saying, there, you see, this is how she really is. Picasso, bending over it, looked at it and replied, she is rather small and flat, isn't she? 
perspective. Today is Holy Trinity Sunday on the church calendar. The only Sunday set aside during the entire church year to honor a doctrine. The students of the Bible know the word Trinity is found nowhere in scripture. But the doctrine of the Trinity comes from a faithful reading of that scripture with an attempt to give a reasonably adequate understanding of God. We find the Creator God making an entire universe out of nothing but a spoken word. We see God as Redeemer in the person and work of Jesus Christ, God in human flesh. We see God as sustainer in the presence and power of the Holy Spirit. God in three persons, blessed Trinity, as the hymn writer has it. It is all in the perspective. On this day, a number of preachers will try to explain the ministry of the Trinity about how God, one God, can be known in three persons. I must say, I try to do that myself. I haven't done that for years because I don't know how to explain it. Some will use the illustration of H2O. Depending on the circumstances, we find these same elements in either water or ice or steam. Some composition of two parts hydrogen and one part oxygen, but three different ways of experiencing these elements. Or I might say to my wife Sharon, I am husband, to my sons I am father, to many others I am Pastor Doug or friend. Same person, but from different perspectives. None of these examples is exactly accurate in explaining this mystery of the Trinity, but suffice it to say, no matter what we say about God, it will never be enough. What we do say will depend upon our perspective. Beyond that, we can let it go with the words of the psalmist, again from Psalm 8. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Perspective. One more story. I'll be honest, I think Trinity is a storytelling time. Can't explain it, might as well tell a story. The man had an awful day at work. Everything had gone wrong. There was one interruption after another and he was never able to complete his work. When he entered the door that evening, he knew that his husband must have had a similar day. You could see it in his face. So to set the process straight or perhaps to get the upper hand from his perspective, he began, I have had the worst day of my life. At work, it has been nothing but bad news, bad news, bad news. I don't know what kind of day you've had, but if all possible, can you share some good news with me? His husband, a thoughtful and loving person, considered his request for a moment and then responded, of course I can. You know how we have four beautiful children? He agreed. Well, he said, three of them didn't break a leg today and only one is in jail. Perspective. Perspective. Friends, I have a question for you. From what perspective will you view life later today? From what perspective will you view life this coming week? COVID or not, it will make a difference. Through the eyes of the world, it was another brutal murder in a brutal existence. Through the eyes of faith, it was God so loving the world that God gave God's only Son so that all might live. John 3.16 from today's Gospel reading for Holy Trinity Sunday. It's all a matter of perspective. To the eyes of the world, Saul of Tarsus was another religious fanatic bent on terrorism. To the eyes of faith, Saul would become Paul, the writer of 1 Corinthians. And now faith, hope, and love abide these three. And the greatest of these is love. 
It's all a matter of perspective. Through the eyes of the world, those who are poor and hungry and sick and imprisoned and vulnerable are a burden. Through the eyes of faith, they are our sisters and our brothers, the people of God who we are called to love and to serve and to do it in word and actions in the most clear and caring and loving and just ways we can. It's all a matter of perspective. Through the eyes of the world, we are too small and powerless to make a difference the eyes of faith. We know that when we go into the world this coming week and in the weeks to follow, we do not go alone. We go with each other and our God goes with us and that is power. It's all a matter of perspective. Through the eyes of the world, you and I are unbelievably insignificant, just one of seven billion plus. Through the eyes of faith, we are incredibly important. God knows us so intimately that even the hairs of our head are numbered. My dear friends in Christ, how will you see things today? How will you see things tomorrow? How do you live your life? Through the eyes of the world, through the eyes of faith. Remember, it's all in the perspective. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.